Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you here in the Palais des Nations. I thank you for traveling from all over the world to participate in this important meeting. You are all here today because your governments and organizations recognize the importance of water in post-2015 development agenda. You recognize the water is not only critical in itself, it, it also underpins most of other themes under the discussions in the world we want consultations. Producing food is impossible without water. Achieving sustainable energy for all will not happen without taking water into consideration. And for healthy people and healthy ecosystems, water is crucial. In fact, water is a key factor in discussions on development, economic prosperity, prosperity, the fight against poverty, environmental integrity, without which those discussions cannot hope to find concrete solutions. One of the major challenges that water faces is that, even though central to other development and environmental issues, it is not seen as such by the professionals working in those areas. I see this on a day-to-day -day basis here at UNEC. We have many programs at UNEC that have relevance to water, such as trade, transport and energy, but they do not take water into consideration in their activities. For example, UNEC has a working party on agriculture quality standards, which works with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and the World Trade Organization to develop internationally agreed commercial quality standards for agriculture products. Yet water is not a part of their discussions. UNEC also works on standardization of vehicles regulations and promoting the use of sustainable energy. Yet water does not enter the equation there either. Given the excluding water from this conversation is the norm rather than exception, we are living with a veritable blind spot when it comes to how serious water issues could become in the future. There will not only be a water crisis, but several other crises in other sectors that are caused by the lack of quality and quantity of water necessary to meet their demands. While there are many reasons for concerns in looking towards the future with regard to water, there are also glimmers of hope. The success of the achievement of Millennium Development Goals on Water shows that with a strong political will and adequate resources, remarkable progress is achievable. <clears throat> also, the implementation of integrated water resources management has progressed throughout the world. In UNEC, we have a special reason to be proud and hopeful for the future of water. Just three weeks ago, an amendment to the UNEC Convention on Protection and Use of Transboundary Water Courses and International Lakes, also known as the Water Convention or Helsinki, Helsinki Convention, entered into force, opening the convention to accession by countries outside the UNEC region. The Water Con Convention is now global, and we are expecting countries outside the region to be able to accede to it by the end of this year. The Convention has provided an important legal framework for cooperation since 1990 and has made a great difference on the ground. It has fostered the development of transboundary agreements, the establishment on joint bodies, and the strengthening of the cooperation at both the political and technical level. It, its globalization offers a great opportunity for prom promotion of water cooperations worldwide. And why is cooperation on transboundary water important, and what does it have to do with the post-2015 development agenda? 60% of the global freshwater flow comes from the 276 transboundary river basins and lakes wor worldwide, where 40% of the world's population lives. Over 90% of the countries have some of their territory in transboundary basins. Shared groundwater has also come to the forefront of water issues, as there are over 300 transboundary aquifers. 
The management of water in the transboundary context adds several levels of complexity, especially in the basins that do not have the same type of cooperative management framework. Upstream downstream relations are often complicated over the sharing of water, and this is compounded when these basins experience scarcity or abundance of water. Regional economic development depends on the development and use of these shared waters, which during these tough economic times is not always straightforward. For these reasons, transboundary water cooperation should be taken up in the post-2015 development agenda. There cannot be water security, which also equates to the food security, energy security, and healthy citizens and ecosystems, unless countries cooperate over their shared water. UNEC has played its role by coordinating the water resources stream of the post-2015 development agenda, thematic consultation on water. You will see how seriously this is taken from the agenda that you have before you for the next two days. We are depending on you as Voices for Water to be active in your participation both during the meeting and especially afterwards to ensure that water has a secure place in post-2015 development agenda. If water is left off the agenda, we risk jeopardizing the livelihoods of everyone on the planet. This being the United Nations International Year of Water, cooperation, I would like to encourage everyone to look beyond their own boundaries, whether political, institutional, institutional or sectoral. Let us work together for a brighter future for water. In this spirit, let me conclude by praising and thanking all those involved, both UN water members and partners such as UN ECLAC, UN ESCAP, FAO, UNEP, UNESCO, UNDP, WMO, GWP, IUSCN, CIWI, and WWF, who have actively compared in the design, cooperated in the design and running of the water resources management stream of the water consultations, including our meeting today. My gratitude also goes to the countries co-hosting Switzerland, Liberia, Netherlands, and Jordan for consultations and support for and political and financial support as well as to our colleagues from UN Habitat and Aquafed. Thank you for your attention.